Welcome to Gopal Electronics webinar discussing the basics of JTAG boundary scan technology. For questions, you can contact, uh, contact us anytime via email or phone. Contact information is provided at the end of this slideshow. Just a quick introduction of Gopal Electronics for those of you who have not heard of us before. Gopal was founded in 1991 as a spinoff of Carl Zeiss and is headquartered in Vienna, Germany. We have branch offices in the United States, the United Kingdom, France, and Hong Kong. Worldwide, we partner with a number of companies who provide technical and sales support to our customers. Gopal has five business units, JTAG Boundary Scan, Automotive Test Solutions, Functional Test Systems, Automated Optical and X-ray Inspection Systems, and Digital Image Processing. With that, let's jump into the topic of today's presentation. In the course of this webinar, we will provide an overview of commonly used test methodologies in today's electronic in electronics industry. We will introduce the JTAG boundary scan technology at a high level and discuss how JTAG boundary scan is used. And finally, we will consider some cost of test issues. Let's look at test methodologies commonly used in today's electronics industry. This diagram shows a typical electronics manufacturing flow where on the left side we start with a screen printing process for the carrier, typically a printed circuit board. And on the right side we finish the manufacturing process with test of the final assembly ship, shipping the end product. In between we typically have test steps at various stages of the manufacturing process. For example, Automated Optical Inspection, or AOI, is widely used after component placement and before reflow soldering. Often there is another AOI or even X-ray inspection step after reflow. The goal is to sort out bad units before passing them on to the next stage and to rework them immediately if possible. Since inspection methods don't verify the electrical features of the unit under test, most test strategies include at least one electrical test methodology focused on manufacturing de defects such as opens and shorts prior to running a functional test. Examples are flying probe testers, in-circuit testers, manufacturing defect analyzers, or a combination of those. Those types of testers oftentimes can provide much better diagnostics of manufacturing defects compared to functional tests. Again, we would want to rework any faulty UUTs prior to spending time on functional test equipment. Practically all manufacturing test strategies include at least one functional test stage to verify whether the product functions per specification prior to shipping to the customer. None of, the, none of these methods uh, mentioned test methodologies is perfect, including boundary scan which is the reason why there's typically a combination of these test methods employed in electronics manufacturing. In order to compare some of the most commonly used test methodologies, we will look at the capabilities to detect certain types of defects and point out major benefits and disadvantages of each method. This co table compares automated optical inspection, automated x-ray inspection, and circuit test flying probe test, and functional test. We will have listed a number of different types of faults classified as soldering defects, placement errors, and electrical defects. Visible shorts, for example, can be detected by all five test methodologies. One may not want to use x-ray inspection to look for this type of defect, though, since x-ray equipment is expensive and x-ray tests are typically slow. For hidden shorts, on the other hand, X-ray is a good inspection methodology, whereas AOI obviously cannot see such hidden faults. In-circuit test, flying probe test, and functional test all can detect hidden shorts because they actually test the electrical properties of the unit under test, rather than just visually inspecting the UT. Visible opens, again, can generally be detected by all five test methods. While hidden, opens cannot be detected uh, by AOI equipment and may be difficult to de detect with x-ray equipment. 
Inspection equipment is good for analyzing the quality of solder joints, but the other three test methods compared here cannot say much, if anything, about solder joint quality. Moving on to placement errors, missing components can be detected by all five test methodologies. A wrong component can typically be de detected by the electrical test methodologies, but not by x-ray inspection. AOI can detect a wrong component only if there is a, visu a visually recognizable feature that differentiates it from the correct component, and the AOI test is capable of picking up this difference. Problems related to component orientation, on the other hand, are typically detectable by AOI, as well as by electrical test methods. X-ray inspection, however, usually cannot detect orientation problems. Misplaced or misaligned components whose device pins still make contact with the pad on the PCB can cause problems later during shipping and handling or once the product is deployed by the end user. Such alignment issues typically can be picked up only by inspection equipment, but not by electrical test methods. The third category of defects discussed here, electrical defects, per definition, cannot be detected by inspection equipment. The three electrical test methods vary in their capabilities to detect these types of defects. Defective components and defective PCBs can typically be identified by all three electrical test methods, while ESD-related problems, circuit design-related problems, and software-related faults are typically detectable only by functional test equipment. Each of the five methods <coughs> discussed here has its merits. AOI, for example, can be used very early in the manufacturing process, keeping the rework costs low. The downside of AOI, however, is the lack of verification of the UT's electrical properties. Automated x-ray inspection has the benefit of using, well, x-rays. It can be used to inspect hidden solder joints that otherwise may be difficult to verify. AXI equipment is very expensive, though, and test execution time can be lengthy. Also, x-ray equipment does not verify any electrical properties of the UT. The main benefits of in-circuit tests are the speedy test, test execution and the thorough test of board-level electrical properties. As long as sufficient test access is provided, the bed of nails test fixture ICT requires uh, can be become very expensive, and the number of circuit nodes that are accessible with nail probes may be rather limited on complex PCBs reducing the test coverage achievable with ICT. Flying probe test does not use bed of nails fixture like ICT. Rather, they have a number of independently moving probe heads that can be used to contact accessible circuit nodes. The types of tests a flying probe tester can execute is very similar or even identical to an in-circuit tester. However, it does so at a much slower speed since the circuit nodes are contacted sequentially rather than in parallel. One might think functional test is perfect when looking at this table since it can detect most of the listed defects. However, test development is usually manual and time consuming. Diagnostic capabilities can be rather limited. Test execution time can be lengthy depending on UUT com complexity and functional test equipment can be expensive. So in summary, we can say that none of these test methodologies in per is perfect and none of them should be used solely by itself before shipping the end product to a customer.